our children belong to God who made them and loves them more than we do. You can imagine that. Yes, God loves them more than we do. Welcome to Life as God Intended. I'm Don Brzezinski and today we're continuing in our series on the subject of parenting as God intended. So if you missed the previous broadcasts, please take a listen. In today's broadcast, we are going to be continuing by considering some misconceptions regarding parenting. In next week's broadcast, we're going to be specifically discussing what our children do not need and what our children do need from mom and dad. Now, as I get started today, may I, may I begin by acknowledging that I am not a parental authority. <laughs> okay, so I just get that out there right away. In fact, much of what I have learned and will share with you comes from many years of parenting of both failures as well as some successes. And I put that whole success thing in quotation marks. So therefore, the observations, and that's really what I'm sharing with you, some observations. The observations which I am sharing are not to be understood as the last word on parenting. I would caution that the truths that I'm about to share are not formulas or proper teaching techniques for effective parenting. That is not what I'm trying to convey here. One thing I have learned over the years of raising seven children and now being the grandfather of seven grandchildren is that what is needed for parenting is not proper procedures as much as a personal empowering of the Lord Jesus Christ by the grace of God in the parent. That's what's necessary. The most important statement I will make about parenting, and for that matter, about the entirety of Christian living, is that only by the grace of God can we be parents as God has designed. So let's get started. What are some misconceptions, you might be able to share a few with me, regarding parenting as God intended? To begin with, we don't have children merely to carry on the family name. Many young couples have felt pressure to produce children, especially sons, to perpetrate the family name. Now, that may be a personal family preference, but it is not a Christian reason for having children. Neither are children possessions to be controlled, manipulated, or managed. Many first-time moms are overprotective and very possessive of their first child, kind of smothering the child. Our children do not belong to us. Our children belong to God who made them and loves them more than we do. If you can imagine that. Yes, God loves them more than we do. And God has entrusted our children to us that we might serve as representatives of his possessions during the formative years of their lives. Too often, children are treated as projects that must be accomplished according to biblical procedures. Christian parenting should not be task-oriented. 
where the parent follows some biblical formula or some socially accepted parental guidelines for producing socially acceptable children. You see, parenting is people-oriented. Little people. Where our children experience a loving relationship rather than feeling like a project that must be completed. Moms and dads must know that children are not extensions of themselves. You see, too often parents uh, project onto their children their own expectations of dreams that they've had that are unfulfilled or educational pursuits that they wish that they had accomplished or vocations that they wished that they would have pursued often trying to live out their unfulfilled desires through their children each child must be allowed to be himself or herself and follow his or her own interests. You see, children are not pawns or servants who exist to do their parents' work. Children should not be forced to serve or manipulated to accomplish the parents' goals or desires. A frequent misunderstanding regarding children is that they should behave perfectly. <laughs> children are not perfect if you haven't already noticed and nor should they be expected to behave perfectly. Well you'd never know it by some moms and dads. Parents must remember that every child is born spiritually sinful and selfish. And the behavioral modification that they're trying to impl implement, that, that is the parents, will not work. Nor is it the goal of parenting. But rather, parents should guide their children to a spiritual understanding that they might, in fact, encounter a spiritual exchange. Children are a provision of the Lord. The psalmist wrote, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Psalm 127 verse 3. All you have to do is ask parents who are not able to have children how, how much of a gift children are. You see, the life of every child is derived from God, notwithstanding through na the natural process of the sexual union. The sexual union has responsibility. The couple who enjoy the pleasure of sexual union must also be prepared to accept personal responsibility of their action in raising the offspring of their union together. Parenting requires a commitment on the part of the parents to care for the child giving adequate time and attention to the needs of the child. Those of us who have children quickly learn as much about themselves as they do their own children, which they might not have ever learned otherwise. You see, one of the greatest lessons of parenting is that of laying down one's own personal interest, laying down one's life. We discover just how selfish 
our personal tendencies are when we become parents. The parent must learn to defer his or her own personal interests for the good of the child. Check out Philippians chapter 2 and verse 4 on that point. It has been said that there is no other process as beneficial to our personal and spiritual development as parenting, with possibly the exception of marriage itself. <laughs> so, contrary to the opinion of many today, children are a privilege and a blessing. Though there are times when every parent will question this. <laughs> By God's grace, we can experience the joy of parenting. I'll admit, children are a lot of work to raise and to take care of properly. Remember, joy is not feelings of happiness when experiencing good circumstances, but joy is the recognition that we as parents have had the privilege of participating with God in the life of our child during all circumstances, whether good or bad. If we are to enjoy being a parent and parent as God intended, there will, then we will need to understand two things. First, what the needs of our children are, and second, how to meet those needs. That's all the time we have for today, but please join us next week as we begin to consider the specifics of our children's needs. Don't forget to check out the link for our blog below, which goes into greater detail. Please like the video and subscribe and share it with your friends on social media.